In the southeast corner of San Francisco, Petrel Hill looks out over San Francisco Bay. Homes for workers in Bayside Industries began to be built on the hill in the late 1800s, but the hill's sunny southern slopes remained open fields where wildflowers bloomed. There was a spot called Poppy Hill where locals picnicked. In the 1930s, clusters of small homes began to be built on these slopes, but the area kept its rural feeling. George Bushneff remembers visiting his grandfather's home there and the goats his grandfather kept. In 1937, President Franklin Roosevelt's Housing Act was part of a national effort to help those called the deserving poor, the mostly white, newly unemployed who could be expected to buy their own homes when the economy recovered from the Great Depression. Federally built developments would be called low-rent housing projects, but rents would be high enough that the old poor, a largely black underclass, could not afford to move in. Land on Petrello Hill's southern slopes was graded for 469 units of public housing, the Petrello Terrace. Land was cheap, and the idea was that curving roads would create self-contained community. When the United States entered World War II in December 1941, there was an immediate need for housing in four shipbuilding centers of the San Francisco Bay Area, Richmond, Marin City, Hunters Point, and Petrello Hill. There was even a call for San Franciscans to move out of town to make room for these wartime workers. On the hill, the Petrello Terrace was turned into wartime housing and the new units were quickly built. The Petrello Annex, 137 units intended as temporary at 22nd and Missouri. The Wisconsin Project, 27 buildings now demolished at Carolina and 24th. And the Carolina Project, 13 buildings called the 13 Colonies by residents at 18th and DeHaro. There was so much public housing on Petrello Hill that if someone heard you live there, they might easily assume you lived in public housing. The war workforce more than doubled on Petrello Hill between 1941 and 1945. Thousands of African Americans came from the South to work in these industries, making up 40% of public housing residents. Residents recall a community headed by working single mothers, where the older kids looked out for the younger ones. Federally mandated racial quotas kept public housing segregated after the war. The justification was maintaining, quote, neighborhood patterns of racial makeup. It wasn't until 1948 that the Supreme Court ruled these practices unconstitutional. Discriminatory lending and real estate selling practices made it impossible for African Americans to take advantage of post-war opportunities. Residents estimate that Hill Public Housing was 85% African American by the 1960s. Some patrol neighbors felt that there was too much public housing on the Hill and that the government should tear a lot of it down. It was supposed to be temporary in the 1960s. Neighbors opposed a plan to make the Carolina Project permanent and campaigned for construction of a public junior high school. They won. The 13 colonies were torn down and Petrello Hill Junior High was built. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Miss Brown. Brown. And that was on Missouri Street. Look yeah, how so tiny she was. was. Back yeah. Door. yeah, when she said something, boy, we all, all yeah. us tough guys got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> they go Miss Brown. Uh, we were calling each other's names. We didn't know what that we were saying. We are too young, right? And she heard it. She came downstairs and she said, what color is your skin to me? And I said, white. And she said, what color is your skin? And back then it was brown. They, they were, that black wasn't terminology. She goes, what color is your blood? I said, red. That's George. George said red. <laughs> so she goes, there is no difference then. There's no difference. All our blood is red. So color doesn't mean anything. And you know, when she spoke, you listen, man. Yeah. I still remember it. Yeah. <laughs> In 2008, Bridge Housing was chosen as the developer for a rebuilding of both Petrello Terrace and Petrello Annex into a new economically integrated community. It's a process that will take at least 12 years. As we imagine the future in that new community, it's a good time to hear a story we haven't heard before. The story of 70 years of Petrello Hills public housing, told by the people who live there.